the hand of God. I told you before, God is doing something here at Mount Zion. Wherever the Spirit of God is, there is always a move of God with it. Once you see God in action, you will never, ever be the same again. You can hear folks preach until we all turn green, but once you see God move, it will change you. Every Christian must be joined to a church, a fellowship. We must attend Bible class and Sunday school so we can be nourished and grow and become what God wants us to become. That's why God says in his word, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I don't care what you are sick with, God is able to heal you. We as a church have continually seen the miraculous. The reason why we praise him is because we don't know what God is going to do, but we praise him in expectation of what we need him to do. And we praise him for what we would like to see him do in somebody else's life. We praise him for what he's already done and we praise him for what we believe he will do. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Praise the Lord. This is First Lady Ann Wilson. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Living Word Ministries, the church of your destiny. God has a word for you on today. Now let us go into the sanctuary and hear the word of God where your soul will be blessed. That the child would become a nothing and a nobody. Hallelujah. When a child is born, the parents usually rejoice. Whether they are in wealth or whether they are in poverty, parents look forward to great accomplishments for their children. I can imagine the spark in the eye of a father as he envisions his child becoming a doctor in the future. Somewhere a mother is dreaming that her newborn son or her newborn daughter will become a governor or perhaps the president of the United States. Uh, there is some father and mother that is dreaming that their child will become the next man or woman of God of faith, power, and deliverance. Somebody has got a dream somewhere. And I, I believe that as the child grows and begins to mature in knowledge and in intellect, the hearts of the parents begin to rejoice even the more because they see promise in that child. Lord have mercy. I want you to understand that everybody in this room was birthed by God into the Christian family with great joy by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I believe that when we were born into the kingdom of God, that God birthed us into this kingdom with a divine vision and a divine purpose. Hallelujah. No Christian is ever born, hallelujah, without meaning and purpose. Everybody has something that God is expecting you to achieve. I want you to tap your neighbor and tell him somebody's got, God's got something that he wants you to do. Come on, tap, tap somebody, tell him God's got something he wants you to do. You, you were not born with no purpose. Hallelujah. God then speaks to us certain words that should inspire us from the book of Jeremiah as he talks about purpose. First, the Lord says to Jeremiah and even now unto us. In Jeremiah chapter number one, verse number five, God says, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you, Lord have mercy. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and I ordained you. Lord have mercy. He then goes on to say in chapter 29 and verse number 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not evil to bring you or to give you an expected end. 
Hallelujah. God has been thinking about you from before you were born. Lord have mercy. I want you to understand, and I'm not going to preach long. God has an expectation of purpose for your life. You may not feel like he does because you're just a, you're just a, a member in a church. You occupy a seat in the pew. But I want you to understand that no matter who you are, and no matter what other folks have said about you, and no matter what you might feel about yourself to the contrary, Lord have mercy, God has an expectation of purpose for your life. He is expecting you to arrive at a certain point in time where he can say you have become useful unto me in the kingdom of God. You have developed into the person that I needed you to be so that I could use you in the area of your gifting and your ministry, the area of your call. Lord have mercy. I want you to understand today that the expectation of God is not that you should become nothing. Hallelujah. It is not that you should become nothing, but it is that you should become something. The expectation of God is not that you and I should suffer for our entire lifetime. I want you to know that there will be times of suffering for all of us. There will be times when you will question God and, and where is God? You may say, hallelujah, where is the God of Abraham? Where is the God of Isaac and where is the God of Jacob? I'm struggling, I'm suffering, I'm going through. I don't have enough to make ends meet. I don't have enough to do what I need to do. I don't feel purpose. I don't feel destiny. I don't feel called. But I want you to understand, hallelujah, that even when you don't feel God, God is still with you. Even when you don't feel called, your call is still affirmed. Even when you don't feel like God's hand is upon you, his hand is still yet upon you. And your call and your purpose is still sure in God. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Lord. I believe that the expectation of God is not that you should live your life in spiritual obscurity. Are y'all hearing this? I believe that the expectation of God is not that the problems of your life are to choke to death your destiny and your purpose. Y'all don't hear me. Hallelujah. Everybody goes through things, but I want you to understand, hallelujah, that the problems and the circumstances of every one of our lives are utilized by God to make us what we should be. Your history is for your future. Hallelujah. Your trouble is for your elevation. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear me. Hallelujah. Your struggle is for your stability. Hallelujah. God has something uh, that he must get out of your life. Uh, and it is going to take every single experience that you go through, the good and the bad, to make you what God wants you to be. Hallelujah. I, I share with you today and I share with folks all the time that we all are like butterflies still in the cocoon looking like caterpillars. And the fact is, is that you cannot be cut out of the cocoon and made a butterfly. You have to go through the process and you have to go through the struggle of travail in order for you to be made a butterfly. Hallelujah. In order for folks to admire the beauty of what God makes you, uh, they must understand, hallelujah, that they have got to see you, hallelujah, in, in, in the cocoon stage where you don't look like anything but a little larva. There is no beauty, hallelujah, in the cocoon. Hallelujah. There is only struggle, and somebody has got to understand uh, that you cannot be cut out of the cocoon, but you've got to wiggle your way out. Uh, you've got to go through the pressure and the problems uh, and the metamorphosis uh, that is required to make you what God wants you to be. But in the fullness of time, hallelujah, you will come out and you will emerge, Lord have mercy as a jewel and you will emerge as beauty you will emerge as somebody hallelujah that can be admired and looked up to in the kingdom of heaven lord have mercy we're in this we're in the making stage hallelujah we're in the making i believe 
that the expectation of God is that somehow, some way, you and I will grab hold of the vision that has been planted within our spirit, hallelujah, and wait for the fullness of God's appointed time in your life. That we will stay in God long enough for God to get out of our life the purpose that he has placed on the inside of us. Oh, y'all got to hear this. Hallelujah. I want you to understand here that it is going to require stability as you wait for purpose. Hallelujah. Now, I share with you, not everyone, hallelujah, will be the master of the scene. Not everyone will be the captain. Not everyone will be the general. Not everyone will be the pastor. Not everyone will be the lead singer on the choir. But there is a destiny that is set aside for you. There is a call upon your life. And I encourage you, stay in God and wait for purpose. Stay in God and wait for your time. Stay in God and know that God is not going to leave you without allowing you to fulfill your destiny. Let me tell you something. You can walk out on God, but God will not leave you. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. Wait for your season and wait for your time. It is Habakkuk, hallelujah, that, 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 that speaks to all of us with words that encourage our faith. Habakkuk says in chapter 2 and verse number 3, for the vision, hallelujah, is yet for an appointed time. Lord have mercy, hallelujah. It's a word of encouragement because it's saying, how long have I been here and yet my vision has not been fulfilled? Habakkuk says, the vision is still yet for an appointed time. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. I told you that God deals in eternity and we deal in time. Hallelujah. In eternity, the vision has already taken, uh, taken place. The manifestation of the vision has already occurred in eternity. But we must wait for it to manifest in our time. Hallelujah. But if you hold on a little while longer, if you stay in God just a little while longer, you will see that your life is with purpose, hallelujah. You will see huh, that God loves you and he cares for you huh, and he will bring you to destiny. Yeah, you. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. In our text for today, God gives Abraham a vision of the future. Hallelujah. He speaks to Abraham and God says unto him, hallelujah, Eliezer, the steward of your house, uh, will not be your heir. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. Uh, and in verse number five, four, uh, he says, your heir shall be one that shall come forth from out of your own bowels. Hallelujah. He then tells Abram, uh, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. I want you to understand here today that this is not the first time that God spoke to Abram about his future. I want you to understand here that the first time God spoke to Abram about his future, he was 75 years old. Hallelujah. It was on this occasion uh, hallelujah, that we have just read about uh, when God reiterates uh, the promise to Abram, uh, hallelujah, and at this point in time, uh, he is 85 years old, hallelujah. Ten years have already passed uh, since God made a promise to Abram. Uh, I want you to understand uh, that the next time, hallelujah, that God speaks the promise uh, again to Abram, uh, he is 99 years old. Lord have mercy. Uh, I hear you, Lord. Uh, some folks say, hallelujah, I I've been waiting for God for 10 years. Uh, I've been waiting for God for 15 years. Uh, God promised me what he was going to do in my life, uh, and I've been waiting for God to do something. Uh, I've been holding on and it's been 15 years it's been 20 years and God has not come by and done what he said he was going to do Abram was 99 years old and it still had not come to pass the problem with Abram's age was at 
75, he was already too old uh, for him and Sarah to have children. Uh, Sarah was 65, Abram was 75. Uh, she was already too old. Uh, every egg had dried up. Uh, Holly, you don't understand. Uh, Abram looked at him and said, we're already too old. Uh, and 10 years goes by. God reiterates the promise uh, to Abram. He's now 85 years old. Uh, Y'all don't hear me. Uh, by the time Sarah becomes pregnant, uh, she is now, hallelujah, Lord have mercy. She is 89 years old. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Let me share something with you. There are times when God will delay, or it seems as though he delays his method or his, his movement in our life. I want you to understand. There are times when God will let you go through because he wants you to understand and know that the miracle that's coming to your life, which is your own ministry, is not by man's hands. It is not because man elevates you. It is not because man lays hands on you. It is not because man calls you to be the lead singer. It is not because man anoints you to be a deacon. It is not because man says that you have the authority as a musician. But it is by God's divine design. It is not by man's hand that you become a prayer warrior and a leader in the church. Deliverance. Your your deliverance ministry uh, is not by man's hand, uh, but it is by the divine move of God, uh, and it is by God's own timing uh, that your ministry will flourish. Lord have mercy. So, hallelujah, for Abram, hallelujah, 24 years, uh, for 24 years, uh, the promise of God uh, and the vision of God uh, went unfulfilled. Uh, hallelujah, Lord have mercy. Uh, hallelujah, so the promise of God uh, as it relates to Abram and his son uh, does not manifest itself uh, until Abram is 100 years old. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, I want you to understand here that whenever, whenever God has spoken to you, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, whenever God has spoken to you about you, if it has not come to pass just yet, just wait a little while, just wait a little while longer, hallelujah, it shall come to pass. The Bible says about God, hallelujah, the God that we serve, the Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. Y'all don't hear me, but between proclamation, I understand, God can't lie, but there's a space between the proclamation of God and the performance is time. Between proclamation and performance, the middle is is time. Y'all don't hear me. From the time of the proclamation to Abraham to the time of the performance through Abraham was 25 years. During that 25 year space of time there were some things that happened in the life of Abraham that made him who he ultimately turned out to be. I want you to understand just a few of them. Abraham goes down into Egypt and tends to be uh, Sarah's brother. Y'all don't hear me. I, I want you to understand during that 25 year space of time, uh, strife broke out between Lot's herdsmen uh, and Abram's herdsmen. Uh, I want you to understand that uh, in that 25 year space of time, uh, Abram divides the land between himself and Lot. Uh, during that space of time, uh, hallelujah, Abram fights battle, uh, a battle with four kings uh, and rescues Lot uh, from the king. I want you to understand in that 25 year space of time, he meets Melchizedek, the priest of God. In that space of time, he births a son by Hagar, his wife's handmaid, and calls his name, they call his name Ishmael. I want you to understand that in that space of time, that 25 years, he bargains for the rescuing of Lot from Sodom. And I want you to understand, and finally, after 25 years, Isaac is born. Hallelujah. 
So then for you and I, how long has it been? Y'all don't hear me. I must be preaching to myself. How long has it been since God gave you a vision for you? How long has it been since God gave you a vision about your children? How long has it been since God gave you a vision about your family? Mm -hmm. How long, how long, how long has it been that God, since God gave you a vision about your gifting, how long has it been since God gave you a vision about your ministry? How long has it been since God gave you a vision about your usefulness? Y'all don't hear me. For some of us, it's been a long, long time while I heard one songwriter say that doubts have come and some have stayed. Nothing's different uh, even though we prayed uh, we feel our friends uh, that God is blessing fast uh, but could it be that God has saved uh, the best for last uh, it's not over yet uh, you're not finished uh, don't turn in the tower uh, there's still uh, time for the vision to be fulfilled Lord have mercy want somebody else you ought to tell your neighbor uh, it's not over yet uh, come on here somebody Tell your neighbor, it's not over yet. From, from, from the time of the promise of God unto me until this moment in time. Lord have mercy. I want you to understand that you can tell somebody that life has happened from the time, hallelujah, that God first spoke to you and gave you a vision for your life. Hallelujah, I want you to understand that time has taken place. But even though life has happened, even though troubles have come, even even though problems have arisen, uh, hallelujah, I still, I don't know about you, uh, but I still uh, believe in my dream. Uh, Y'all don't hear me. I still uh, believe in my dream. The problem uh, in Christendom today is folks have lost the ability to dream. Uh, we've lost the ability to see uh, the purpose of God in our life. Uh, but I don't know how you feel about it, uh, but I still have my dream. Uh, I'm still a dreamer. Uh, there are folks in here today, you need to be able to confess uh, unto your neighbor, uh, I still have my dream. Oh yes, somebody ought to be able to say, I still dream of being able to sing. I still dream that I will be blessed. I still dream that I will achieve. I still dream that I will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, I still dream that I will teach to the multitudes. I still dream that I will overcome my issues. Lord have mercy, I still dream that I will prophesy under the power of Almighty God. I still dream that I will build my business. I still dream that I will write and publish music. I still dream that I will write a book. I still dream, I still dream, my dream is still alive. I still believe, hallelujah, somebody ought to say, I still believe I will go to college. I still believe that the hand of God is upon me. I still believe I will overcome my fears. I still believe in my dream. My dream is still alive. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Hear me, hear me, hear me, Mount Zion. Hear me, Mount Zion. I'm about to close. Hear me, Mount Zion. Hallelujah, Lord, have mercy. I'm going to preach to Mount Zion and to myself. Y'all don't have to say amen. This is for me. I still believe in my dream for Mount Zion. Y'all don't hear me. My dream for Mount Zion is that it be a multicultural church. Y'all don't hear me. I still have my dream. My dream for Mount Zion is that Mount Zion be a church of unity, a church of power. I still have my dream. I still believe in my dream. My dream for Mount Zion is that it be a church of worship unto God. I still have my dream. I dream for Mount Zion. My dream is that Mount Zion be a church of praise from the depths of our soul. I still 
believe in my dream. Y'all don't hear me. I dream that Mount Zion be a church of truth. My dream is alive. I dream, my dream, my dream for Mount Zion is that it be a healing and deliverance center. Y'all don't hear me. My dream for Mount Zion is that it be a church of hope for the hopeless. I still believe in my dream. I believe in my dream for Mount Zion that it be a church where dreams will come true and visions are realized. I dream for Mount Zion. My dream for this church is there be a church where families come to grow. That's my dream. I dream for Mount Zion. There'd be a church where men become men. I dream that Mount Zion will be a church where women continually grow in love and sisterhood. That's my dream. Lord have mercy. I dream I dream that Mount Zion will be a church where the young grow up in God and need not be re-evangelized when they are old. Y'all don't hear me. That's my dream. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's my dream. Lord have mercy, I see, hallelujah, a Christian education center at Mount Zion. I see a transition house for both women and men. Y'all don't hear me. I see a transition house where those who feel lost and who feel that nobody cares, they can come and be able to dream again, be able to see themselves as somebody as valuable. I have a dream for Mount Zion. I see, I see churches birthed from this one. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I see ministers fulfilling destiny, not leaving to fulfill, but being sent to fulfill destiny. I still dream for Mount Zion. Lord have mercy. I see ministers carrying the truth of God's word around the world because they came to Zion to fulfill their dream. I dream.